All right, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to Seba Ben Browns. Today is April 6th, 2021, and we will focus on mode targeting schemes and volume control uh, are the cases that will come through. Some disclosures. Uh, we discuss particulars of ventilator modes. There is no endorsement of any particular mode manufacturer or company. Whatever we say, it's our opinion. It does not represent the Cleveland Clinic's opinion. Uh, I receive royalties from books, chapters, and lectures, and I'm co-owner of a patent with Rob Chadburn and the clinic for mid-frequency ventilation. Rob Chadburn is consultant for these companies that you see here, also receives fees and royalties and the, the patent that we mentioned. So, some ground rules. This is a recorded session, so keep your microphone muted. The moderator may call upon members of the audience to comment. That's very good. If you want to comment, there's a chat box uh, in WebEx. And so just put there your questions, your comments, your uh, things. And if we need to interact, we will uh, call upon you to, to clarify questions or to comment and help us through this. We do use a WebEx, WebEx poll to elicit audience interaction. So for as you start learning more about the method that we use to read waveforms, uh, this will make more sense to you. But in the meantime, uh, just go with the flow. You'll start seeing how we, we go through the whole process of reading waveforms. Uh, for Cleveland Clinic employees, we get CME, and there's going to be a QR code at the end of the session that you just need to use your phone uh, to follow. Uh, to take a picture and it will get you the CME. And we're working right now in getting actually respiratory therapy uh, credits uh, for for the team that comes and joins us because we want everybody to get uh, what they're getting, which is education and value for it. So to start to see how the, the audience is uh, and to check, check your chat function, uh, just type in your chat where are you joining us from, and uh, that would be useful for us. So you should see a chat function in all in the uh, device. Enter if you're where you're joining us from, your institution, if you want. So Philadelphia, uh, Canada, uh, Memorial University, uh, people from the clinic, evidently, we have a fair amount of people from the Cleveland Clinic connecting. Beirut, uh, that's right, Hala, uh, Hara, uh, your last case we uh, put here from Beirut, from the uh, American University of Beirut Medical Center. No, no. Well, thank you for joining us. Let's get started with this. We, we thought to start with a little uh, talk just to orient everybody to that we made uh, during the presentation. And so I, I just want to take your attention on to what is a mode of mechanical ventilation. And this is key for us to understand how the mode interacts with the patient. So it's a predetermined pattern of interaction between the patient and the ventilator. And uh, it's a specified as a particular combination of the control variable, the breath sequence, and the targeting scheme. And when you add all of these, we use this term, which is a tag, which is this series of letters that helps us summarize what the ventilator is doing. So what you will see is that uh, we use only pressure, or volume as control variables. And that is based on the equation of motion that you can see all the way on the bottom uh, left corner, in which we can only control either the pressure that the ventilator delivers, or we can control the flow and, uh, and the volume as a result of that. So that, those are the two only variables that we can control at this point of mechanical ventilation. 
And there's three breath sequences, this, uh, which is continuous mandatory ventilation, intermediate mandatory ventilation, and continuous spontaneous ventilation. And that is because there's only two types of breath. There's mandatory and spontaneous. And mandatory uh, is a breath in which the machine controls either the trigger or the cycle. That means the size of the breath. Any of those, if it's controlled by the ventilator, it's a mandatory breath. And spontaneous means that the inspiration uh, the, is triggered and cycled by the patient. There is no control from the, the okay. machine. This is a common source of, of confusion in which people think that because you're giving assistance that that's a mandatory breath, but that's a completely different item. So uh, when we talk about mandatory breaths, we're talking that something is being controlled, the trigger or the cycle by the ventilator. Uh, and then there's the targeting scheme, and we wanted to focus today on, on targeting schemes because these sometimes generate challenges in people of saying, what, what are they talking about with targeting scheme? And this is uh, a key work from Rob, uh, ways that we're controlling the ventilator via computer software. And you will see that there are, at this point, seven ways to control the ventilator. Uh, but there can be more, uh, without a doubt. This is the initial classification that we have, and, and we'll talk a little bit about these different targeting schemes. And that takes us to the tag, and you'll hear us talk a lot about the tag. Uh, we first start with the control variable, then a dash, and then the breadth sequence. And then if this is a just CMB, we, you would only have one uh, letter over here, which is the targeting scheme. But when you have IMB in, in which you have mandatory and spontaneous breaths, then you have an, uh, two uh, letters that determine the targeting scheme for the mandatory breaths and as well as the um, spontaneous breaths. Rob, uh, any comments about this? Uh, item, this is important for all of us to just understand where we're coming from with this. Oh, that's very good. And sometimes um, we'll talk about uh, the different kinds of IMV. So you might see IMV in parentheses one, two, three, or four, but you can talk about that later. Absolutely. That's uh, as we have evolved in our understanding of the modes uh, and actually of understanding of IMB that led to this classification type one to type four of IMB. So th this will come actually on, on the conversation today without a doubt. And what you have here is the targeting scheme of a mode. And, and at this point, there are seven described targeting schemes. and. If you want to think about them in this way, the, the level of complexity moves from the top to the bottom. Uh, meaning set point is the most basic one and essentially you, the, the operator selects the values and they have static set points. Uh, so uh, you, in, if you think about set point in volume control, which we'll really review today, you set the title volume and the inspiratory time and that's uh, the key part. Then there's dual, and we'll see a couple of examples today about that in which the ventilator switches between volume control and pressure control during the breath. These are pretty basic modes. They exist, and we need to understand how they interact with the patient. Then there's this, what we term semi-automatic, in which the ventilator can select some dynamic set points, and it's, it's based on a static model. And you have the bio variable servo, which is uh, an R adaptive and optimal. And here are the definitions. We'll go more into them in a second. But bio variable essentially, uh, the thought was that we don't breathe at the same size of breath all the time. And so the ventilator randomly changes the inspiratory pressure. And this is only present in one ventilator today. Uh, which is the Draeger and its variable uh, pressure support, uh, the name of the, the mode. There is servo in which the inspiratory pressure is proportional to the effort. Uh, and that is present right now in uh, three modes. Uh, one is NAVA, proportional assist ventilation and tube compensation. Those are uh, three modes that have inspiratory pressure proportional to effort. Then there's adaptive, and this is a pretty common mode uh, uh, or targeting scheme available in most ventilators currently, 
which uh, the ventilator adjusts the set point so you uh, to meet a target. So if we if the most common presentation right now is uh, where you set a title volume uh, target, uh, and the ventilator will adjust the inspiratory pressure to achieve that target. And the common names for these modes are PRVC, BC plus, uh, 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 adaptive pressure ventilation. Then there's optimal in which the ventilator will use uh, adjusted targets. So it uses an adaptive targeting scheme to maximize or minimize a parameter that has been entered by an equation. And essentially you can do an equation. The, the, the classic one is ASV, adaptive uh, servo ventilation, which, uh, that essentially gives uh, uh, ventilation to minimize the work of breathing. And so the, you, it adjusts the targets to uh, maximize or minimize that parameter. And finally, intelligent, which is essentially the ventilator adjusts all the targets using uh, tools from artificial intelligence. And uh, there is some modes that are available out there. I mean, the, the first one was uh, intelligently named Smart Care, uh, but now there is IntelliVent also as one. So these are all the targeting schemes that are available at this point. Uh, Rob, do you want to comment on this, uh, uh, please? I think uh, we lost Rob uh, into. Oh, that's right. He had a, he had to leave. So, uh, without a doubt, uh, many of these uh, modes are available, and we'll, we're going to review a couple of them today. I think uh, the the most useful thing that I can provide to, for you today is, uh, and and we're going to use this today, is the Rosetta ventilator mode card, and what we have done. Actually, uh, a lot of work uh, and uh, innumerable hours by Rob and, and us trying to figure out what actually each of the commercial names of each mode is by uh, putting a tag. And this is important because now instead of having a commercial name, you have a term that helps us understand what the mode does. So we're going to put this into practice today um, and we'll go from there. I do have a question for Moja that says, is assisted breath spontaneous? And the answer to that is it can be spontaneous or mandatory. Uh, that's why using the word assisted is not a good differentiator of what is a mandatory and a spontaneous breath. So you can have a, a breath that is mandatory that by definition, because you're uh, stating the size of the breath and or the timing of the breath is gonna be assisted. But you can be spontaneously breathing without assistance or with assistance, like in pressure support, but you're, uh, you're determining the cycle and the, uh, the trigger and the cycle of the breath. So that's what makes it spontaneous. So you can have a spontaneous breaths that are assisted or unassisted and all the mandatory breaths are assisted. That's why we don't use that definition when we're talking here. Thank you for the question. All right, so here's the, the, the first, uh, Waveform and, and what I'm going to, I'm going to activate the poll and I just want, before I activate the poll, I want you to uh, think that the 1st thing that we do is we say, what's the tag for that uh, mode? And so that means what is, is it volume control CMB or, or, and, and the targeting scheme? Then what is the load We de define? What is the dominant uh, item? And we'll visit this in different uh, presentations as we go through the several rounds. And then the PV discordance, which we go in order, trigger, inspiration, cycle, and expiration. And uh, what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna open the poll and I'm gonna leave it open for around two minutes uh, or three minutes for you to fill it out. It has three sections, the same that you see here, one, two, and three, and uh, just fill it up, have no fear, okay? And then I'll ask for the fellows on the line or respiratory therapists on the Cleveland Clinic that want to, if you want to jump up and discuss this uh, waveform, please let me know, either by the chat or unmute yourself and say, Eduardo, I'm in.
30 more seconds. You guys are moving well through it. Very good. All right, 20 more seconds. Closing it down. All righty. So you have 20 seconds to finish as you're doing this, and then I'm going to share with you the, the poll results. I know Chip, thank you for uh, jumping in to read this one first, and uh, we'll go through it. And uh, we learned a lot with, with from these waveforms, actually, when they occur on these patients. So uh, let me show you the poll results. So, in general, uh, if you can see the poll results at this time, people answered that this was volume control CMBS, so uh, continuous mandatory ventilation with set point. Um, that the majority, of the majority of people thought that this was PMOS, uh, that was the uh, highest uh, uh, load, that the trigger was normal, uh, although there's some that thought that this was missed triggers. Uh, majority of the people felt that there was severe work shifting and uh, that the cycle was normal and uh, that's it. All righty, go for it, Chip. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yes, Chip, thank you. Okay, so the tag will be uh, VCCMVS um, and it has that, uh, that mode enabled where it shows you or tries to simulate what the patient uh, is doing, which kind of throws me off, but uh, yeah, that one, that little snake. Uh, so yeah, VCCMVS, um, there is, uh, there's PMUS, I think inspiratory and expiratory as well. Uh, inspiratory PMUS definitely evident in the second breath uh, that you can see there, yeah. And then expiratory PMOS is evident there as well in that same breath. Uh, looking at the breath prior to it, however, which looks like it was triggered and cycled by the ventilator, um, that expiratory limb, well, it's hard to say because that second breath is, is patient effort breath. So I was gonna say maybe elastic load, but uh, I don't think you could say for sure with all the PMOS going on. Um, PV discordance, so the trigger, uh, I think there is a, uh, I think there's a missed trigger here. Um, right before the first breath, you see, yep, that right there. Looks like missed trigger to me, or failed trigger, I guess. Um, the other triggers look okay, but there's definitely that. And then there's work shifting and inspiration, uh, I guess flow starvation, we used to call it. I don't know if we still, are using that phrase, but it's it's falling below baseline. Yeah, I'm breath number two. And then the cycle, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this. I think the cycle is actually fairly normal. I'm looking, I don't see any, you know, deflections in the expiratory limb to make me think that it's like a, a early cycle or there's no, you know, it's not late because it's, it's machine cycled. Um, so I think it's a yeah, normal cycle. And then there's expiratory work definitely on the second breath. And uh, yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much, Chip. Uh, re really good, good observations. And uh, so the, the key here is you, you obviously see volume control up here and volume control. And, and one of the keys that we have learned is that sometimes the name doesn't mean what we, we're looking for. And one of the, the things that always threw me out when I when we started using this ventilator was that the flow waveform was deformed and and that should not happen in volume control. In volume control ventilators are outstanding 
uh, volume control, uh, controlling flow. So when we see these waveforms, it makes you think that actually you're controlling pressure and uh, and and flow at the same time, and it, it just didn't make sense until we spoke with the the team of engineers that actually uh, clarified to us that the that these were simulated waveforms whenever this symbol is on, and and for that I'm, I'm going to show you because uh, we deactivated it. Uh, on the same patient, so uh, you can see same settings, and now the waveform is perfectly flat, uh, and and you cannot see that that little uh, symbol there; it's gone. So, uh, do do you need to deactivate it to know that this is volume control? No, but this is something for you to know that what you're seeing on the flow waveform is actually a simulated waveform; it's not necessarily the truth. And that was a, a an important thing for us to recognize and to learn. Um, so let's let's get back to this. So volume control, so you're controlling the flow, as I showed on the other uh, slide. Now the, you said that these were all mandatory breaths. Um, what, how do you know that this is patient triggered or uh, machine triggered uh, chip? Uh, looking, I mean, this looks like a a pressure trigger. Um, you can see. Yeah, there's a little white uh, deflection prior to each breath. So those are the patient triggered. It looks like the first breath here is maybe uh, machine triggered. That's and then, Yeah. So this is machine triggered, and this is so if They're it's all machine cycled. Right. Oh, sorry. Exactly. So you got it right. So all of them are machine cycled because it's volume control, uh, and all the. The breads, these are, these are patient uh, actually triggered. So this is a good example of how to do the classification of the of the breads. So this is definitely a mandatory breath because you're controlling the trigger. And this one is what you know, sometimes this confuses people of saying, well, it's a patient trigger breath, so it's a, a patient, uh, it's, it's a spontaneous breath, but it's that's not uh, true. The, the, for the taxonomy of, and for definition's sake, Whenever you're controlling something, which in this case is the cycle, so when the breath ends, it has to be a mandatory breath, and that helps us understand that much better. So, outstanding. And then in set point, uh, the, the the item that you choose is you 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 set the tidal volume and actually the inspiratory time, and it doesn't matter what the patient does, uh, and you can. This is a lot of effort from the patient. The patient got. Exactly. I mean, a little bit more than 450, but the, the, the same amount that you, you have to do, and that has to do with this uh, compensation algorithm that we can talk a little bit more that will allow you to get more volume than actually what you said. Uh, so, excellent job with the, with the tag and looking for uh, any uh, comments right now. And if they say, um, is that flow simulation also on other ventilator models? We don't know, uh, Richard. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, this is the one that we recognize because we couldn't read the waveforms. And, and then we spoke with the engineers and they uh, explained that it was due to this uh, little, uh, it's a tube compensation that actually all ventilators have uh, circuit uh, compensation. It's, a, it's what you do when you start the, circuit, the ventilator to ensure that the compliance of the tubing is the, and the ventilator are delivering the appropriate tidal volume. However, uh, they added this extra feature on the servo U that modifies the waveform. I don't know exactly why they did that, uh, what the clinical rationale for that, but they, they did it. And uh, that's, that's how it happened. So then let, let's go to the load uh, chip. You, you did very, uh, astute uh, observations, and and I, I will start by drawing. I'm going to erase for a second uh, these um, these waveforms over here, so that we are not that uh, confused about them. And let's take a look at the the first breath. So normally, uh, this breath should look essentially like that. It should be a straight line. Sorry. Imagine this is a straight line and, and today I'm not very straight in my, my drawings. 
but you see how the pressure actually has gone down below the level and this is uh, chief what you you termed work shifting and it's work shifting that it's probably on the mild it's not a, a major issue there's some deformation of the waveform but on this one because it goes below the baseline uh, it goes all the way actually if you if you imagine this is zero it actually worked again it was dropping the pressure to sub uh atmospheric pressures technically. So over here, there's some work shifting. That means that you see a little bit of effort from the patient. Whatever the patient is doing when he's asking for a breath in will subtract from the P vent, from the pressure from the ventilator. And so you can imagine that this is the tracing, the amount of effort that the patient is doing and it's subtracting from the effort from the ventilator is, is uh, trying to achieve. And that's what it used to be called, or actually it's called uh, commonly as flow starvation. However, uh, flow starvation is not what's happening here because the patient is still getting more flow than the, than the patient uh, is asking for. So this is not flow starvation. There's some work shifting and here it's extreme work shifting. The, the patient is doing more work than the ventilator should be doing. So that's why the term work shifting. Questions, uh, Rob? Then Rob, uh, Chip? Nope. All righty. So uh, you you did fabulous here finding the the work shifting here, the triggering and 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 whatnot. So in trigger, you recognize this one over here. This is a failed uh, a good example of a failed trigger in which the patient did not cross because they have set him to a pressure trigger. So even though he crossed, almost got to the uh, cross the, the baseline of flow, he did not generate enough negative uh, pressure to trigger a breath. And so this is a uh, one of those situations in which a failed trigger is not due to auto peep, which is one of the most common causes of a uh, failed trigger. This is when uh, somebody has set the trigger mechanism uh, to pressure. Uh, inadvertently or intentionally for other reasons, and and then you can have these missed uh, triggers. So you you uh, which used to be called missed triggers, but it's uh, we we term it failed trigger because the patient is doing doing effort and it's not triggering. It's not that there was a trigger and it didn't it it, it, it failed it. So excellent job here. Over here you can see a little bit of uh, the trigger starts here and then the, the ventilator takes uh, the pressure goes down over here maybe a little bit below baseline but it's not major and so it would not be a late uh trigger uh for this breath and this one is just massive work shifting that we talked about so this is all work shifting and, uh, and pretty severe to to it finally cycling um you you did very good at, at recognizing when i when i think about uh, late cycle, I, I look at two things, uh, or early or late cycle. So if it was an early cycle, meaning that the breath ended earlier, then you see something similar to this in which the, 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 the patient is still doing some effort to inhale. And, uh, and because he's doing still that effort to inhale, the pressure goes up. However, this may also be that as you recognize that the patient is also doing effort to excel because there was evidence over here that he had finished his breath and then uh, he transitioned, the eye time ended. And, and then expiratory work, uh, this is a good example of a, a exhalation in which there is no effort. So you can see how it, it, there's exponential decay. And then this one, instead of having that exponential decay that you were looking for, there's all this area over here that tells you that the patient is doing expiratory work. So he's trying to exhale. Here maybe he's trying to inhale. Here he's trying to exhale, definitely. So uh, the question from uh, Marco was, uh, how do you differentiate between early cycling versus expiratory work and, and early cycling, what you see is inspiratory effort. So just like you are seeing right here. And uh, and in expiratory work, you, what you see is actually the, the line moving away from the baseline. So in early triggering, there's the, the line moves towards the baseline or early cycle, sorry. Uh, you see the, 
line move towards the baseline, and when the, you are doing expiratory work, so try to blow air out, the line moves away from the from the baseline. Uh, so, uh, Chip, any other questions about this? Does this make sense? Nope, makes sense to me. There's a question here uh, that I would like to, how do you know if there is a low starvation or the patient needs more volume? Uh, and so th that's a, a, a good question. So remember that when you control flow, you control volume. Uh, so in reality, you are trying to contain the, uh, the the amount of flow will be dependent on the amount of volume that you want to, to give. So if I want to give the volume in a shorter period of time, then you will get a higher flow. And if I get, want to give, if I give it in a longer period of time, then you will get a lower amount of flow. So you can imagine that some patients may have a high effort at the beginning of the breath because that's when they, they are feeling the air hunger. And so if you get, gave them a very long inspiratory breath, even though the volume is appropriate, the flow is inappropriate for them because they want a faster flow. So in those circumstances, what you may, may see is imagine that this is the flow waveform and you put it this long. And uh, this is the pressure waveform. I'm gonna draw it here very tiny. Uh, and the patient does this effort over here. And then the breath goes over here. So maybe what this patient needs is at this period of time when he's doing the majority of the effort is just shorten your eye time Move it over here so that there's a higher amount of flow and and get rid of it. Uh, yeah, th so that's a, a, a great question. Um, and there's another question in the group that says, well, how do I know that this is PMOS versus that there is the, uh, dynamic uh, changes in compliance during the breath? So what people call the stress index. And what I would say is that the, the first one is that you will see evidence of PMOS and, the, and PMOS is rarely consistent or tonic and you will see, you will not see the same change in every single breath. While in, if this is a, a issue with compliance, uh, changing through the breath, you will see it throughout the, throughout the breaths that you're following. The second is that you, uh, in this type of patients, there's uh, ways to actually assess for the presence of uh, PMOS. So, uh, Chip, I will ask you, and actually we did this today, how do you assess for the presence of PMOS in a patient? How do we assess for the presence of it? Yes, what did we do today to assess the presence of PMOS? You can put your hands on the patient and uh, see if they're making uh, effort there. Excellent. What else? You can look at the waveform. You can look at the end title. Uh, uh, Any maneuvers that we did today? You can do uh, the expiratory hold. Yeah, so so that's a, a a key one, right? So you press the end expiratory hold, and if there is evidence of PMOS, you're gonna see deflections, negative deflections on your pressure waveform that tells you that this patient is actually trying to breathe uh, during uh, your inspiration. So it's a simple maneuver. To do an end expiratory uh, pause to see if there's presence of PMOS or not. So really good good questions to to argue about. Very good. So I'm gonna show you the same waveform actually now, and you can see the difference between uh, these uh, these modes. So in in this patient, it's the same patient, but we turned off. The compensation, and you can see the flow is is constant now. Instead of uh, this jagged uh, presence, which again it's a simulated waveform, it's not the truth. And you can see how how much work shifting this patient is. So you you know it's a patient trigger breath because you see the change in color, uh, and it's pressure trigger because actually in this mode of venti in this ventilator, they change the color according to where the trigger is. So we know that this is a pressure trigger because the change is happening on the on the pressure waveform. And uh, if you notice, uh, the flow doesn't change and the pressure actually goes way beyond uh, below the the zero uh, uh, the, the zero pressure line and the patient is generating negative pressure. So, which is uh, not a good thing for a patient is uh, like he, he was, he was doing a maneuver 
and and that can generate pulmonary edema and more dynamic. I mean, discomfort. Just just imagine about all of this, and you can see again the evidence of some PMAS during these uh, during these breaths. Um, questions uh, from anybody on, on our team? So let's move to our, our, our next waveform. And actually, uh, what we did is this is the exact same patient. And uh, I'm, uh, I saw EBM uh, asked me to that they, they would be happy to do to deal with these waveforms. So before I deal with the waveform, I'm gonna uh, change the screen and I'm gonna send the poll your way uh, for do you uh, do you want to save the poll questions now? All right. I'm gonna oops. Give me one second. There. So I'm going to open the poll, and you're going to see now this waveform as we speak. And here it goes. So please answer uh, the poll. And uh, again, go from the tag what is the load and the patient ventilator discordance. We will give you a minute and a half or so. Have no fear. Nobody knows who's answering. And you guys are doing great. See, some of you are getting stuck uh, at some point, so. Right. So let's go over this one. Uh, who wants to try this one? Morales, I can do it. Uh, EBM is the computer here at the Bronx. <laughs> All righty. Thank so, you. For being, uh, let's, <laughs> let me show the, the, the poll results and I'll, I'll let you run with it. So uh, majority of the, the, the population thought that this was BCC and BS. Uh, then there is a... Uh, good amount of people thought that this was PMOS, uh, again, evidence of PMOS. Uh, majority of people thought that there could be some early treatment or normal. And then um, uh, work shifting mild uh, to moderate, that was the, the feeling. And then uh, normal, uh, normal cycling. So go for it, Samit, help us. So, looking at the wave from Dr. Morales, especially if you look at the flow wave from the first one, I mean, again, it's the tube compensation is on, so it's a simulated waveform, so I'm not sure what actually I'm seeing. But the first waveform doesn't look flow controlled, but the second waveform looks sort of flow controlled. And the third waveform looks was flow controlled and then turned into something different. So, I would assume that this is the, 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 the variable we're trying to control is volume. So, BC, it's a. CMV because uh, I think part of the most of the breaths are machine triggered. Well, there's some, uh, and most of the breaths are machine cycled. At least breaths two and three are definitely machine cycled. Um, and, and, and the triggering also seems to be machine triggered in at least two and three. The first one may be a patient trigger, if I can see. It looks like a pressure trigger there. And I think it's dual, it's, it's, it's shifting between pressure and flow control so it's uh, bccmdd um for inspiration i think most of the load uh, is pmas i i i would be
hard to say otherwise because uh, if you look at the second breath, maybe uh, there might be a, a elastance component to it, but for majority of the inspiration, I would say Themis is the major uh, major uh, load, and I think for expiration as well, Themis, I would say. Uh, it's going to be the major because the time constant seems fairly equal between inspiration and expiration. Um, looking at the PV discordance, uh, the first breath I can see a pressure trigger and then the waveform is there. So I think the triggering is normal. The first, the second, I think it's a machine triggered. Breath. I don't see any input for the effort. The third, again, looks like a machine trigger. And the fourth, I don't really see the waveform. So uh, I said normal triggering, uh, inspiration. Um, I think the first breath, again, looks like pressure control, but um, can't really determine work shifting there. This, Maybe most of them is patient work, but second waveform again uh, looks like uh, uh, maybe mild work shifting there, but for the most part, it looks pretty, pretty decent. Uh, the third waveform, I can definitely see some inspiratory work shifting. Maybe the patient either is trying to exhale against it or it's just a simulated waveform from changing for flow to pressure. Trigger, so hard to say, but the pressure waveform seems to be there some negative deflection. Uh, so third waveform definitely has some mild work shifting. Uh, cycling, I think breath two and three are machine cycle for sure. I, I don't see any late or false cycling, but again, it's a change in this mode and the simulated waveform that makes it hard to determine. Um, expiration, I mean, maybe some mild uh, work shifting there, especially in the first and second breaths, uh, but nothing, nothing acceptable. Very good. Um, very good, Sabid. Uh, I'm going to mute you so that the background noise goes down, or if you can mute yourself. And uh, I'm going to uh, walk you through what you, you said. So excellent, excellent work. Uh, again, this is one of those, and I want to gu guide your attention. Uh, Samir picked up on it uh, very well. Uh, uh, there is a, a little change on, on what you're going to see for a second. So definitely it's volume control. We agree that the, uh, as you recognize if the tube compensation is on, so this doesn't look as beautiful as you would like to. Uh, but you, you see how the, the flow starts and then it's well controlled and then the patient there's this change on the uh, on the flow. Uh, suddenly, it goes all the way up, and actually, you can see it on the first breath how how there's this major change on on flow, and it doesn't look like it's controlled. Uh, so this is uh, without a doubt a dual targeting scheme where you start with a volume control and it changes to pressure control, and in this ventilator, it's due to the presence of uh, PMOS of effort from the patient. Uh, however, there is a, a, a little thing here that, that we had to change is that if you notice, this is a, a, a breath that is triggered by the machine, right? It's triggered by the machine and it's cycled by the machine because of, of the flow and the eye time. This one is triggered by the machine in this case, but it's cycled. It's cycled not by time, but it's cycled by the patient flow. For, so it uses a different variable. It's uh, once that you have passed the tidal volume, the machine will uh, stop using the eye time and you can cycle at any time. So when we classify this on the tag, uh, it's the same mode that you saw on the patient. So before it was volume control and as, as Chief had said, it's volume control CMBS. But when we are on this mode and we press the button, the, the button that's called flow adapt adaptation and, it, and the the flow adaptation is a little button when you're in the settings that has a little square and it has uh, a little thing on top like this. And that's all you need to do to change the mode to BC, IMB, DD. So the breaths can now in the middle of the, of the, the, or in the middle of the breath when it changes to pressure control, 
the patient can uh, uh, cycle the breath whenever they, they want. So if it was patient triggered, it becomes uh, into a, pa a spontaneous breath. And actually you, you can uh, see now because the flow changed, we had the volume set at 400. And so this is a 400 tidal volume breath, or maybe, no, actually this is a 400 tidal volume breath because we control well the flow. But the prior one and this one, this one actually is closer to a liter to one liter of tidal volume because the mode changed from volume control to uh, pressure control. So uh, the, the, the tag of this mode is actually IMB DD. And uh, I, mean, I know that this may seem as a little details, but this helps you understand now that if you activate that, you, you, the patient will be able to get very large tidal volumes uh, if, they, if they so wish to have. You recognize very well the presence of PMOS. Probably in this one, there's very little PMOS, very little work shifting. But in this one, you can see that actually it's dropping the pressure below uh, below the set uh, PEEP, which is a type of work shifting. So this one is a, 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 a severe level of work shifting. This one, there's a tiny bit, and this one, because of the way that the mode change, you can see that at the beginning, the so so this is so pretty. You can see here the beginning step up that happens because the flow went up and then the pressure is going up and you can see exactly the same thing here. And then the patient does the effort. <gasps> and when he takes the big uh, effort here, it changes to, to PMOS to pressure control and it maintains the pressure above the baseline, avoiding the level of work shifting that you saw over here. So you don't see it drop as much as it did before because of that switch that it did to dual control. So dual modes avoid, help us prevent the presence of, uh, of work shifting or severe work shifting. Although you can see that here, uh, if the patient pulls hard enough, he will achieve it. Uh, so, that's the, the the finding that you see here about saying that there is a good amount of uh, PMOS, uh, Samir. In terms of patient ventilator discordance, I want you to, to look at this pattern. So this one is a mandatory breath. The next one is a mandatory, uh, a mandatory cycle. So mandatory trigger, mandatory cycle. And then over here, you have a breath that is triggered by the machine, right? It starts. And then there's evidence of PMOS. So the patient breath starts here and it ends up here. What's the name of this Samid or anybody? You can enter it in the, into the chat. Anybody? So breath, the, the name exactly, Michael, excellent job. So this is early cycling. So the breath, whenever you have a mandatory breath, and then there is evidence of a, a patient breath. That's what we called an early, early uh, trigger. So there's a normal one. I mean, this was a machine trigger, so there's nothing to criticize there. And then this one, it's a classic case of early trigger, which uh, uh, in the conventional uh, or, or in the literature is called as reverse triggering. But I will say that uh, you have to be careful with that, th that term because we are not entirely clear of the theology, and this has generated a lot of anxiety. Actually, I was reading just a, a paper on this in which they are saying, well, not every mandatory breath followed by a patient breath is a mandatory. It's a reverse trigger, and that is true when, when you because the physiology is not entirely clear to us. And but what we're describing on this taxonomy, on this way of describing, is that there is a breath that started earlier and then there's the, uh, the the patient and the causes for that may be a lot there may be more than uh the ventilator triggering the patient's action it may be just entrainment it may be other things that are happening there so uh what you have here is a, a very good case of man uh, of a uh, early reverse trigger uh with work shifting but that actually became mild from being very severe on, or moderate compared to the other one. The cycle, I think, is normal because of, as you can see, it's patient cycled. And you appropriately, Samir, recognize that this didn't have the exponential decay. And because it doesn't have the exponential decay, that looks like there's expiratory work. The same thing here. Instead of having a 
exponential decay, there is evidence of exploratory work. Uh, this is a very nice exploratory work, for example, that's uh, that's a passive breath from this patient. So, with that, uh, I'm going to pause for a second and see if anybody has any questions that you want to uh, post. Uh, but this helps you as we, we are talking about targeting schemes and about modes, how important it is for all of you to recognize that you would not have known that this patient had changed from BC CMBS to BCIMB DD uh, because there's no other marker in the screen that would tell you so. You, we, we knew this because I did it. I pressed the button and I activated, activated the, the different mode, but this is available on the ventilator and people press it or don't press it. Uh, and there is no other marker on the screen that can tell you that that's uh, happening. And you can imagine the difference between this patient and this patient in terms of sedation or comfort or uh, or issues. Exactly, Marco. That's a, that's a, the right question. Is the second part of the third breath? So this breath over here, the patient is, is triggered and patient cycle. So it starts as a mandatory breath, uh, but it's patient cycle. Uh, but the first one, actually, if you, you see this one over here, what I suspect is that this was a patient triggered and patient cycle breath and that's why it becomes a pressure uh, a pressure support which is why we have an imb dd type of breath that's uh, how we ended up with that classification for this so excellent observation any other questions uh from the team i'm uh, i'm gonna put here for our ccf team the uh the CME uh, credit just scan this, or you can go to the website and here's the CME code. I will also put it here. Send, uh, it's the same uh, for the, the CME, the same uh, device. So just grab your camera, take a picture of it, or scan it, and it will take you there. You can send us via Twitter or directly to that email uh your waveforms we love to bring waveforms in uh from everywhere and actually our fellows uh and respiratory therapists provide a, a fair amount of these waveforms for us to discuss and as you can see there's a lot to talk about on these uh waveforms so with that i i will stop and see if there's any other questions and if not um i i will thank you for your time Very good. I don't see any uh, further questions. Excellent uh, session, Chip and Samir. Very good reads uh, from our expert uh, fellows that are following the same uh, pattern that we, we have just showed you. So thank you very much. And uh, as I said, actually, on Twitter, this is available on the website and you can connect. And all of these uh, recordings will be there for you to uh, review and send us further comments. Thank you.